So we're here with Gabriel Carroll, one of our new coaches in Hong Kong, new meaning about a year now. Gabe's come over from the UK, and this is going to be our first in a series of vlogs um, that we want to post so that you guys can get to know the coaches as well as a little more of what we do and why we do it. So Gabe, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, why you're in Hong Kong. Um, well, yeah, as Morgan said, one year in Hong Kong, born and raised here, but left at a fairly young age. Um, my dad was in the police force, he thought, finished university last year, thought give it a go, bring myself back out to Hong Kong and it's paid dividends, it's been great. So rugby initially brought me over, but I've stayed largely due to my opportunity with Pinnacle, which has been great. It's a great chance to capitalize on what I learned at university, which is a sports science degree, but since then it's gone very well, so. Okay, and while you're at home, what, you played for a couple of rugby teams. Uh, yeah, so rugby's been my background ever since I could walk. So it was, came up through the English system, but thankfully my dad's got a Scottish heritage, so I spent a bit of time in Scotland playing some representative rugby over there. But I've been all over the place. My last couple of years before here was at Loughborough University, which is a great place to train. And then the National League won back in England, which is a great standard for me. And uh, yeah, so it's been good, been all over the place, but rugby's been ongoing ever since a young age. Okay, okay. So why did you come to Hong Kong and why Pinnacle? Well, I came, came to Hong Kong for a variety of reasons. Um, one reason was injury, so I kind of thought back home in England, I was found myself in a bit of a rut once I left university. Kind of thought, well, let's try something different. Let's see what I can do with my degree. So came to Hong Kong. My dad insisted it was a place that if you worked hard, you'd be awarded with the right opportunities. Cliche as it sounds, but thankfully a year later on, I can kind of see, yeah, that's one of those things that's happened. Um, chose Pinnacle because I saw the video online. So I typed in strength and conditioning, performance, performance athletes, various gyms in Hong Kong, but Pinnacle Performance itself was one of those places that I looked at kind of thought, right, this is a science-based, evidence-based place where they train athletes, they train people with understanding. So I thought to myself, right, see what I can do, managed to catch up with Tom Summers and the rest is history. So. Perfect. Okay, um, well, going right off that, let's bounce to a, a bit of a different exercise. You were doing some cleans yesterday. Um, yes. And while you're doing some cleans, we had another coach, Christian. He trains at um, Pinnacle Black. But Christian was there and basically helped you fix a bit of your um, of your clean technique. Can you uh, yeah. kind of walk us through that and explain to us how he walked you through it? Yeah, so that was a great. Um, for me personally, I'm fairly inexperienced coach. I've only had one year in the industry. So someone like Christian, he spent the last eight to ten years in California working with high-level basketball athletes. So for me, it was... It was a great chance for him to come in the gym. We were training together. Thankfully, he was looking at the right moment as I did a power clean, and he kind of just went, mate, what are you playing at? Let's break this movement down and kind of turn into one of those CPD opportunities where you bounce off each other, give each other ideas, and he broke the movement down for me in such a way that if I were to deliver that to another coach or another athlete, I'd be able to discuss that. It's not about me being the best power lifter or the best Olympic lifter. It's about me being able to get these ideas across to someone who's maybe not as, ex as experienced. So... For me, performance sport is my passion. Performance sport is work with these sorts of athletes. So what he taught me was apply force to the floor rather than just do what I was doing, which was using the juggernaut strength to get it up. So we mm -hmm. learned a lesson there, which was great. Right. And with that, so when you're teaching me our members, as an example, right, um, you're teaching a brand new member who's just walking the gym. What do you what do you get them to start off with? You regress them all the way, right? Yeah. So what do you get them to start off with? Well, with a clean, obviously that was one of the biggest things we spoke about. There's various regression and progression points with the clean. And the best thing that Christian did with me was just go, right, let's bring this back down to basics. From that hang position, let's just work on getting up as tall and as vertical as possible. For me, these little cues that we give members for the first time are so important. We all understand as coaches these kind of what we call internal cues. So drive through your hips, bring your hips up, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your glutes tight trunk. But for these guys, it's just about going, right, how do we break this down and make it as simple as possible? So, look, get up as tall as possible. Jump off the floor. Chest up, stay tall. Get as tall as you can. These cues, these ideas that I've learned over the past year is how you can connect with someone who's perhaps a novice but enjoys coming to the gym and training. So. Right. Beautiful. Okay. So why do you think it's so important for things like this to happen, this knowledge exchange between you and Christian and, and all of our coaches or any other coach in any other facility for that matter? Uh, I think that's one of the best things about Pinnacle. It's You've got coaches with a breadth of knowledge across different teams, across different sports, and for us, we're always trying to learn. We're always trying to get better. Right. Like It's cliche, but if you knew 
you need to know more today about the facility, about the kind of program that you're implementing than you did yesterday. If I don't believe in the program I'm giving these members, then I shouldn't be coaching it. Strength conditioning is a science. So if I believe and understand the rationale behind for why we're doing this stuff, then of course it's easy to translate, it's easy to get across to these people. Okay, um, and in terms of, I guess, external research, right, and, and reading, you, I, I see that you guys all do a lot of that. Yeah. Um, how important do you think that is? Knowledge is power, isn't it? So it's one of those things that we've got these, like I mentioned, CPD, continued professional development. So each year as coaches, we get the opportunity to kind of go into an area we're not too familiar about and to go, right, can I have a bit of support on this? Can I take some time out to just dedicate my time with this subject? For me, already this year, I've spent some time with Tim, Tim Gavitt, who's worked with various NRL teams and football teams up and down the Premier League. So opportunities like that, for me, it's kind of how we consistently improve and get better as coaches. And if you're not getting better as a coach, then for me, that's kind of when you stop loving it. Right. Okay. Awesome. And going going to back to that science part, this is something that came up two days ago. Uh, yeah. One of our members uh, has come in and basically she wants to grow a booty. And this happens with quite a lot of people, <laughs> right? Um, why? So you were explaining her the hip thrust. Why we do the hip thrust. And she didn't really understand why we do a single leg versus, you know, do like a hip, thr hip thrust. Um, mm -hmm. So can you walk us through one why? Why one-legged versus two-legged? Why you use both? Why you yeah. program both? And also, you know, what what how it benefits you? How the hip thrust in general is yeah. is a great movement. Things with that with that member in particular, um, she's only ever used machines. She's never right. stepped into a gym. She's never just seen barbells. And for me personally, I'm a firm believer nothing holds a candle to resistance training. So trying to get this person to believe and understand what she's trying to do. Her biggest thing was, look, I want to tone. But what I was trying to show her, what I was trying to educate her on was, look, you don't, you can't tone muscles. There's no such thing as toning. Right. You change your image by growing muscles or breaking muscles down. So her biggest worry was, if I lift big weights, I'm going to get big. I'm looking, going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. So trying, mm -hmm. to, trying to get across to her, look, these single leg, these bilateral, these unilateral movements we're giving to you are going to change your image by growing muscles. Don't be afraid to lift weight because load is king at the end of the day. And even for females, you see with females nowadays. They're doing these heavy hip thrusts, but these are the sorts of things that are going to have and pay dividends in the end, rather than just being sat on a machine that stays in one plane of movement and you're just going to push weights up and down all day. For me personally, working single leg off balance, kind of working on all of those trunk, those stability muscles in and around, all the glute, all this muscle support in the glute, that's how we change our image. So for her, it's about making her realize you don't need fancy equipment to get better, to look better. It's just about creating that buy-in for her. Single leg hip thrust, great unilateral movement. So in terms of hamstring work, glute work, it's one of those things that if you can do something on two legs, you should be able to do on one leg. The bilateral hip thrust, two feet plant on the floor, great thing for most people, you can just load the bar up. Right. And for me personally, one of the best movements for performance athletes, as well as a daily gym goer. So right. glute, posterior chain, all of those sorts of things. That's how we're going to get better as an athlete and get stronger, get fitter, and look better. Right. And and her, you know, her her profession requires her to be very mobile right yeah. and and that's the thing right i mean we've had a few athletes come through pinnacle and you can tell that they've worked with a lot of you know machines yeah. and as a result they just don't move right if their movement patterns are off. um okay so in terms of, i guess for me as as someone who's i guess trained but has never really gone into too much of the science um how how would you explain to me so i, I come in i know that i do the hip thrust i know that it's Great for growth. I know it's great for glute growth, especially, right? It's it's great for hamstring and quads, but why, in terms of you know performance, how does that benefit me as an as someone who wants to you know be better at say running, right? Oh, for hip thrust, it's like I've used this every time I teach the hip thrust. The hips are the center of human power development. Anything you want to do, hip extension, hip hinge movements, but it's being able to come from there hip extend as we go through with a load across your waist. Right. Sprinters, jumpers, similar to what Christian taught me. It's getting that hinge position, it's getting your hips through the bar. If you're just working with your knees, ankle and knee extension, you're missing the big part of your body, which is the hips. So trying to coach that with athletes, with sprinters, the hips are one of the most neglected parts of the human body that people don't understand. People think, right, big legs, big strong quads, big upper body, but the hips is what allows you to apply force to the floor. It allows you to change direction, allows you to break through tackles, allows you to jump higher. The hip thrust itself has been proven, much like the trap bar deadlift jumps, to improve speed, to improve that kind of force production. Right. And it's 
it's the journal say it, the science has it there, but it's just been able to give that, give it to someone who either wants to look better, grow stronger, or give it to someone who's a performance athlete. It's going to make you better, it's going to make you stronger, make you quicker. So the science is there, it's kind of in question, which is good. Beauty, okay. I know that one of your uh, favorite sessions to coach is actually uh, our Thursday lunchtime session, which is the yeah. mob session, the mobility session. Why? Mainly because my body's broken. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the mobility for me is something I've only really been introduced this past year. I have spent years hammering my body, playing rugby, getting injuries. My shoulders have gone through several different kind of transitions from AC joints, labrum tears, and I've kind of realized the importance of the longevity of weight training doesn't just have to be lifting weights. Right. It's about understanding how the body moves. It's been able to understand that you're sore, you're sore because of imbalances. Right. So if one side, same as with the single leg hip thrust, if one side works and the other side works a lot better or one side doesn't work, why is that happening? So with the mobility session, it's a great chance for me to get a really good hands-on approach with members to kind of say, look, you're sore for this reason. Why is your squat not getting as deep as it needs to be? Why do you struggle when you're overhead movements? Let's take a look at it. So for a lot of our members, the overhead squat is one of those things they really struggle with. Well, why? Let's start from the bottom, ankle mobility. We saw with members the other day, the ability to dorsiflex that ankle is what something members often neglect. But then you kind of come into the posterior chain, lower back, shoulders, all these things, which we spend an hour on, soft trigger work, myofascial release, all the foam roller work, but it's a great chance for me to get on my knees, kind of, get in and amongst, and it's a great benefit for me, playing rugby at the weekend, break down all those kind of imbalances and all that sore tissue that gets hammered over the weekend, playing rugby, but also in the gym, when you're lifting weights, you're breaking muscle down. Right. You're gonna create damage, you're gonna create stress, DOMS, all these sorts of things that people find. So the mobility session is a great supplement to what you're doing in the facility. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, we do have a lot of members who come in and you know they've been sat at desks all day, yeah. so they just get the tightest hips, crazy active sh traps, at shoulder issues that we see with every single member pretty much. So that's great. Um, so what do you think about doing another video sometime soon with mobility work? I'd love it, love it. Um, you see the these mobility, these movement coaches, these body coaches on Instagram, the social media guys, that's where it's going. That's where performance sports are going, I think. So I think you can be big, you can be strong, but unless your body is able to move with full range of motion, unless you're able to bend down and pick things up comfortably without feeling, oh, this is tight, that's tight. And unfortunately, we're going to plateau. So I'd love to go through that. Awesome. Okay. Um, before we move on to our final question, what is the most memorable thing you that's happened to you in Pinnacle in the past year? Memorable thing in Pinnacle in the past year? Oh, it's tough. It's tough. Probably doing this vlog. Probably be up there. Yeah. Probably one of the hardest things I've done. So it's been good. Okay. It's been good. Okay. Good. Um. Your favorite exercise? I know that you told me earlier it was the squat, the back, back squat. squat. Okay, um, talk us through it. What kind of cues do you use to coach it? What kind of cues do you personally use? Um, and what kind of mobility work you do beforehand? You know, kind of walk us through it so that we, we can understand why one why it's your favorite exercise and two how we can improve our squat. Um, yeah, so the back squat for me is thankfully I've been gifted with short legs thanks to my dad. Um, but no, the back squat for me is one of these what we call these primal lifts. It's one of the big five. You've got your bent over row, your deadlift, your squat, all these sorts of things. So for me, the squat has always been an indicator of just how strong I am. Everyone knows if you're able to lift weight overhead or above your chest, then that's fine. But the squat for me is a great indicator of glute strength, hamstring, hip mobility, all those sorts of things. So for me, when I first get in the gym, the prep and time that you take beforehand the squat, before with the squat, with the mobility work is crucial. Hips, ankles, all these sorts of things. You find people wondering why they can't squat heavy. You get a lot of people in the gym nowadays with herniated discs, all these kind of issues in the lower back. We can address that, break the squat down to its bare bones and kind of go, look, let's learn to squat properly. Let's learn to brace our spinal column. Let's learn to kind of activate this. Then we work from this angle. People have got dodgy knees. People have got sat at a desk all day. People can't get beyond parallel. So that's what we're trying to coach them through this guy. So the back squat for me indicates your strongest points, but most importantly, it indicates where you're weakest. Right. So it indicates if you're shooting off to the left, one side's tight, one side's not working. For me, that's, you put a member through a back squat session, then you kind of, by the end of it, prescribe them with something that doesn't necessarily involve back squat, but it, it showcases what they need to be doing. Okay, and what kind of cues do you coach them usually? When, when, when members come in and they're struggling with the back squat, for example, maybe they've 
you know, unwrap the bar. It's on their shoulders, and you see them kind of hunched over a little bit with the shoulders. They're next. They're, they're kind of looking down. Um, and they, and when they go down, they kind of yeah. lean forward. Well, for me, well, I, same as what happened this morning. I was working with a client who, until he looked at himself in the mirror, he couldn't see that every time he went beyond parallel, his chest would drop forward. So for me, it's just those external cues you speak about. So step as tall as we can, bring those shoulders in tight, bring those elbows in as tight as we can. But for me personally, the back squat is just imagine you're sitting onto a box. Everyone knows how to sit down onto a chair. Everyone knows how to sit down onto a bench. Do the exact same with the barbell on your back. Right. Learn to sit back, hips go back first, chest stays up nice and tall, stand up tall as you come up. Stay tall, sit back, come back up, brace your core. Right. After that. So those are all the external cues. For you, when you're squatting, what do you tell yourself? What are your internal cues? Please get back up. <laughs> Please get the weight back up. Uh, but for me, it's I've always had kind of issues in my lower back. So for me, it's about maintaining that kind of what we call intra-abdominal pressure. So I need to focus on that. If I don't control my breathing, then my back goes, my lower hips will kind of sway off to the side. That's when I start to struggle. So for me, it's all about maintaining that torque. So. Right. Okay, beautiful. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we will be back with our next vlog soon with one of the new coaches.